all you ever needed to know about the Arduino Uno. If you would like the same for ESP32 and PyPico, let me know in the comments. So what makes this little board so popular? Let's break it down. First up, the digital pins. The Uno has 14 digital input and output pins. These pins are like tiny light switches. They can either be high or low, on or off. Here's a quick demo. We have a switch and a light. Flip the switch and the pin goes from low to high, turning the light on and off. Simple, right? But there's something important to remember. The Uno runs at five volts. That means if you plug in a sensor that only likes 3.3 volts, you could fry it. Always check the specs and if needed, use a level shifter to match the voltages. Some of these digital pins can also do something called PWM or pulse width modulation. Think of it as pretending to have a variable voltage by rapidly switching the pin on and off. Here's an example. This LED isn't just on or off, it's fading in and out thanks to PWM. Next, the analog pins. The Uno has six analog inputs labeled A0 to A5. These pins can measure variable voltages between zero and five volts. Here's a demo. A joystick has two variable resistors. Moving it changes the voltage on the analog pins. Now let's talk about communication. The Uno supports I squared C, a protocol used by many sensors. Look for the pins labeled SDA and SCL. I squared C is great because you can connect multiple sensors using just these two pins, freeing up the rest of your board. There's also SPI, another communication protocol. SPI uses separate pins for clock, data in, data out, and chip select. Like I squared C, you can connect multiple devices on the same bus. Power-wise, the Uno has a few options. You get 5 volt and 3.3 volt output pins to power sensors and modules, and a VIN pin that can accept up to 20 volts, which gets regulated down to 5 volts. Never supply voltage directly to other pins they aren't regulated. The Arduino Uno R3 is amazing, but it does have limits. Heavy math, large programs, or running audio and video are too much for its 8-bit brain. It can't handle high-speed multitasking or big network tasks, and each pin can only supply small amounts of current, so motors and big LEDs need extra drivers. For sensors, lights, and simple projects, it's perfect, but don't expect it to do everything. 